Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be answering some questions that you guys have about the propeller powered bicycle and maybe some things that didn't quite get covered well enough into the video and of course maybe go into a little bit more depth about some of the components on the bike. Before we get started I do want to clarify that this bicycle was never intended to be a bicycle. I built this from a photograph from a 1963 Popular Mechanics magazine. So the bike was actually a platform to test a propeller and it was really designed for self-propelled flight. And the bike is just a means of transportation to test propulsion. And I wanted to see, can this weird strange propeller actually do what was claimed? And the first question really was, how come I didn't power the rear wheel with the chain? And remember, when you're in the air flying, the wheel doesn't do anything. So remember, the bike is just here to see how much thrust that this propeller can generate, to see if you can actually get some flight. So looking at the photograph in the Popular Mechanic magazine, I was not able to see the bike in its entirety, which left a lot of questions on how Ernest Winters, the inventor of this little contraption, made his bicycle. So I had to use my imagination and I came up with those twisted belt for simplicity's sake. I now know looking at a video that's popped up and some other extra photos that Ernest did not do a twisted belt design, which I kind of figured maybe he didn't. He used a gearbox. And the problem with a gearbox is that the bicycle frame is gonna have to be altered tremendously to get this propeller to work. I do think the gearbox and bevel gears is a more efficient design, but in the terms of simplicity and getting this contraption to work with an existing bike, I think this was the best solution. Is there some friction in this setup? Absolutely. Is this the best setup? Would I do this again? Probably not. The next version, if I did do this, I would chop a frame up and make one from scratch and have this drive shaft go right down the center of the bicycle. I think that opens up some more opportunities there. I'd also like to shift the center of gravity or the weight of the rider a little bit further forward because it's a little tail heavy. The front end is a little bit light, but that is, is a whole nother video in itself. Just having a good starting platform to know what works and what doesn't is a great idea. So I would change this. A lot of you guys said that this is a horrible bicycle and that this propeller is gonna hit pedestrians. And you're absolutely right, this is a horrible bicycle. The bicycle is pretty much perfected in this day and age. But remember, this was not meant to be a bike. This was meant to test propeller and propulsion with your feet. This is not gonna be riding on any trails. This is not gonna be starting a new trend. It's can you take off with some wings and by pedaling, and we now know 60 years later from this design that we could absolutely do that. This is now a thing. And from Ernest's design, people have built and expanded and experimented because of this design. Do not put a propeller on your bike expecting to have great returns and be able to go faster. You're gonna be hitting things. It doesn't turn very well. Just keep that in mind, what the original goal of this design was for. The next question is, how come I just didn't buy a propeller instead of build one? There's two reasons. You cannot just go buy a propeller that looks like this. This is something that's really strange. Finding a propeller that turns at such low speeds, this is a close to 400 RPMs, and of this size is pretty much unobtainable. We have to build it. And that's what attracted me to this project, is I want to increase my skill set as a metal worker, fabricator, engineer, and see if I can actually duplicate something from a photograph and I have never built a propeller before. And this is why I love metalworking, is because we can make things from our brain or from a photograph, and collecting skill sets to make propellers is what I'm all about. So I'm always gonna choose to make it instead of buy it. A lot of you guys said this propeller needs to spin even faster, and possibly, but much like in a regular bicycle, at some point in time, the gearing is gonna be so high that you just cannot turn the pedals. You, it takes more horsepower, to turn the pedal when your gearing's high than what I can physically generate. I can only generate maybe 0.2 of a horsepower, maybe one for a short burst of time. And when you gear the propeller up, it takes more horsepower requirements to do that. And that's just unobtainable. Put your bike in 10th gear and go try go up a hill and say, I wanna go 100 miles per hour. It's just, you don't have enough horsepower to go up the hill. That's what this is like. So that's a reason why I cannot make this spin any faster. And in order to make this spin faster, there's gonna to have to be some changes made. So let's talk about that next. In the video, I mentioned that Ernest propeller was a variable pitch propeller. And there's a gray line between this. A variable pitch propeller in today's terms mean as you're flying an airplane, 
that you can change the angle of the propeller from inside the cabin. And Ernest's propeller, even though this is a pretty close recreation, is also variable pitch, but he has some struts that go between the propeller blades that he can push and pull and flatten the propeller out, changing the twist or the pitch of the blade. He can't do it from riding the bike as you're going, but he can surely alter the pitch and flatten the blades out as he deems necessary. If he wants to build this bike for speed, he can push it flatter. If he wants to go a little bit for acceleration, he can get more pitch in it. So yes, this is a variable pitch design, just not in the standard format that you guys are used to. This is very unconventional, of course. In the video, I had an animation describing how a propeller works and how a propeller can move more load closer to the fulcrum and less out at the tip. It's like a lever arm. So I rigged up this quick little cheesy setup to demonstrate this a little bit better. It's rigged up to a low horsepower motor, which is going to basically be representing my legs. I am very weak as a rider. Okay. So as you turn on, it goes pretty good by itself. The mega square here is going to represent air and weight. It's pulling down on the propeller when it's trying to move through the air. If we put it at the tip, watch what happens. You see that? It won't lift it. It doesn't have enough power. The motor does not have enough power to lift the mega square. What happens if we move it closer to the fulcrum? This is simple physics. Wow! See, we can obviously lift the weight. But that's a quick demonstration why we can move more air closer to the fulcrum. That's why we need more pitch up here. We can lift more, we can move more material, more air, more volume. But at the tip, we don't have a lot of torque. So we have to move less air out here. Plus this is spinning really fast. So you're obviously gonna be moving a lot of air when it's spinning faster. So hopefully that demonstrates that you can't move as much air at the tip as you can closer to the fulcrum. And it has to do with your power source. And I have little legs and we have to maximize that as much as possible. That's why we need to have a lot of pitch closer to the prop center and not as much at the tip. Next question, why didn't I use a lighter bicycle? Well, I'm trying to stay true to the photograph and this was a 1963 magazine and they didn't have carbon fiber bicycles that weighed 15 pounds back then. So I'm trying to recreate Ernest's photograph as closely as possible and replicate the myth that this bicycle could do 20 miles per hour with a propeller. So that's why I chose a heavy bicycle and I just think it looks cool and it's classic looking. Next question, how come I don't put a motor on this bike? Remember, I'm not trying to build this bike for speed, I'm trying to recreate the photograph. Ernest didn't have a motor, I'm the motor. And I'm also trying to see how fast can I go by pedaling. So a motor is just gonna turn this thing into a, basically a airplane. There's no problem getting up to speed or taking off if we put a motor on it. That's a whole nother project to get this thing to go as fast as possible with a motor on it. Maybe we'll save that for another time. The other problem is you guys said that this whole propeller design is horrible. And you know what? Ernest is not here today. This was built 60 years ago and I'm gonna represent Ernest and defend him a little bit. I think this design is actually pretty good. It started from a flat piece of stock. It was easy to recreate. The way he put the struts on there, he could change the pitch angle and do some testing with it. I want to try to make a better propeller knowing what Ernest has already built, and this is a great platform to try. I'm gonna open up the opportunity for you guys to help participate in designing a better propeller for self-powered flight. I'm gonna be doing some of my own testing, and I encourage you guys to submit your own. So all you guys need to do is build a propeller that's no greater in length than four foot six. It needs to be able to slip over a three quarter of an inch shaft, and please submit it to me. I'll leave something in the link in the description where you guys can email me and submit your own propeller. Also the requirements is that this propeller needs to spin about 400 to 500 RPMs. Keep that in mind. It's probably gonna need to generate wind speeds up to 20, 25, maybe even 30 miles per hour. I'd like to see if that can happen. And it needs to be able to be pedal powered. So just keep those RPMs in mind. I'm not gonna gear up the bike to make it go faster. It's gotta stay just like this. So I did some calculations in Ernest's video and it's turning about a four to one gear ratio, which is almost pretty exactly what I got here. So to keep things fair, please submit your ideas and don't submit me some engineered drawings. I actually wanna see a propeller because we will test it on the YouTube channel. You can 3D print it, 
you could bend some sheet metal, you can paper mache, anything that's gonna be able to sustain some testing. Materials are free range, do whatever you'd like. I'm actually really curious to see what you guys come up with and to see if this 60 year old design is actually pretty good or if it's really bad. I have some ideas of my own that I'm gonna be testing. So let's have a little competition and make it fair, right? Thank you guys for watching. I look forward to seeing what you guys submit to the project and the problem and I'll see you guys on the next one.